You are listening to the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. It's now, a global affair. In this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. But the way we opened the episode was with an introductory portion. Today's intro was 32 minutes long. This is where we talk about current events. We tell fun stories. Mm-hmm. We generally have a lot of fun. After that, we answer the questions. So I'm going to give you a rundown of today's episode. We open up by talking about uh, the fact that I have to get a new pair of Viore jogger pants. You've I got, messed them real good. I got <laughs> I messed them. I got breast milk all over them. Yeah. Uh, because uh, you know I'm trying to help my wife feed the boy. And uh, spill them all over. Viore makes amazing athleisure wear clothes with a lifetime guarantee. That's the best mm. part. You can actually return them at any time. Get a new pair. They look really good. Justin, didn't you just get something that looks Yeah, amazing? it is winter. And so I was looking at coats. And they have this new Atlas jacket that's amazing. And you can wear it like it's not too hot. You know, it's perfect time uh, to go check that out. Yeah, and Justin looks really... If you're watching on YouTube right now... The um, handsome one in the group. Yeah, he's definitely the handsomest one. Anyway, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a full 25% off all Viore clothing products. Here's what you do. Go to vioreclothing.com. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash Mind Pump. And then you'll get the 25% off. By the way, um, it makes a great Christmas gift. Then we talk about black market breast milk. Uh, People are buying this stuff to build their muscles. Leave it for the babies, guys. What are you doing? Then uh, we talk about my lying controversy. <laughs> There's a fan that thinks I lie all the time, apparently, so we yeah. talk about that. It's a real issue. Then we talk about uh, dealing with friends and family who have conflicting vlo- views. It is the holiday season, so this might be something you want to listen to. Uh, we talk about Tesla being included in the S&P 500 for some reason. Uh, they also make a tequila. We talk about that. And then Adam tells a very Cheers. fun uh, story about his male ego and racing his car. Oh, yeah. Then we got into the questions. Here's the first one. Uh, This person wants to know if there is such a thing as non-responders to resistance training. In other words, are there people who just don't build muscle? The next question, what are the benefits of the floor press versus a traditional bench press? Third question, what do we think about cluster sets? Like, what are they good for? What are the pros and cons? And the final question, are there any adverse health effects to eating uh, really close to bedtime? Um, by the way, Black Friday sale is here, okay? It's the biggest sale by far we do all year long. All MAPS workout programs, every single one, even the newer ones, yeah. are all 65% off with the code BF. No more waiting. BF MAPS. That's the letter B, F, and then the word MAPS. All bundles. This is where we combine multiple MAPS programs. We already discount them. Add an additional 50% off with this code, BF Bundles. In other words, everything is on tremendous sale. Individual programs, 65% off, code BF MAPS. All bundles, 50% off, code BF Bundles. Find all of them at mapsfitnessproducts.com. By the way, those codes can be reused time and time again. So if you want to buy more than one program for 65% off, keep using the code. Get them all if you want. There is no limit. Hold on to, to your, your life. To your cakes. Hold What's that song? on well, to the memories. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I can't come even, on, don't. Come on, that was I can't be- even harmonize That's with that. That's fucking better. Huh? Don't lie. That's better. Do it again. Hold on to the memories. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you guys got to laugh like hold that? Hold on, hold on. What? Come on. You got to uh, do it one more time. Uh, yeah. Hold on to the memories. <laughs> no, it's not any better. I'm sorry. Come on. I'm really? Sorry. I'm sorry. Come on. Yeah. I, I was it's like, not that, is it that bad? It's yeah. so bad. Bro. It's so bad. Is that why my, my I feel mom, like there's dogs barking. My, right mom would, my mom would never let oh, me sing, so. sing in church. She was like, shut the fuck no, up. No, she did it. Shut the fuck up. Just listen. She really listen. Just fucking clap your hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just clap your hands and fucking mouth it. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. I always sat next to somebody like that that was just super tone deaf. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Glory to the, the, when you uh, when you first when we first met. I don't remember what happened. We did an episode and you started singing. Yeah. I thought you were doing it on purpose. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, that's funny. He's like, oh, he's hella funny. That sounds. Like, he's making fun of bad like, people. Oh, can't man. sing. Yeah. Oh, this guy my gets god. it. Oh, oh my god, that's terrible, dude. Oh. I need another. I need a new pair of uh, Viore joggers. What did you do? Breast mm. milk all over the oh. show. Oh really, bro? 
every time. I, I thought I, you're busting out with your thickness. No, no, no. The I, joggers stretch. I wonder dude. if they, I I wonder they, they uh, cover that in their lifetime warranty. Dude, I got uh, breast milk. Do you know all how over frustrating it is to mm. spill breast milk? That's oh, yeah. gold. It is yeah. gold. Oh my, dude, Jen, Jen, did Jen, you spill it? Double was it whammy. your fault? I so I spilled like a, like a squirt because I was you know feeding my boy with the, the syringe or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jessica, so this she was so mad, dude. She pumped and got like a decent little amount or whatever. She's tired, right? Obviously tired. And I hear her, fuck, fuck. I'm like, what? She <laughs> spilled breast milk. That on the floor. One time that happened to Katrina, oh, and it was the exact thing. same. She was, I think she was like transferring it into something, and it like slipped out of her hand, went all over the floor. Oh, bro. And I, same thing. I don't think I've ever heard so much profanity from Katrina Dude. ever. Yeah, you know, you, your heart, I tell you, and I'm, I'm like, is she pumping yet or no? She's pumping after to encourage to, to, more production. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Once, I mean, once she gets to the point where she's starting to you pump. You ever watch the pump do, do its thing, yeah, yeah, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Yeah, yeah. It's, me, it's mesmerizing. <laughs> 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 it, pulls the, it pulls the whole thing in I there. can't help but think you two perverts right away wanted to borrow it. Once <laughs> huh? Just let me, let me borrow it for 15 minutes. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. no. We're not a bunch of freaks. It's for my kids, dude. Come on, guy. That's for my kids. Yeah. Disgusting. But uh, But breast milk apparently has got anabolic properties. Well, it reminds me of that. I told Jessica. Netflix show uh, that they were covering that, um, and, and and this guy was ordering it uh, <clears throat> online from a breast milk bank, but they it wasn't the bank; it was from an individual because yep. they don't do that. Like no. they, they won't because uh, it's so like necessary and valuable for for mothers that don't have milk. Yeah, so if you buy breast milk from a bank, first of all, you have to you're, you have to qualify, do all that stuff, and then they all um, pasteurize it. Yeah, so they flash pasteurize it to make sure it's safe. Well, there's a lot of people who want breast milk and they don't want it pasteurized because they want it natural yeah. to have its natural bacteria. But then you're buying like breast milk on the black market. That's like human, yeah, you know, that's a human yeah. fluid on the black really market. You don't really know, yeah, how you're going to receive it and all that. Yeah, there's this total jabroni dude, you know, that's just trying to get <laughs> jacked of like drinking some girls like you uh, watch that random show. person's milk. Did you know, watch dude. that show? Didn't you yeah. watch? Yeah, yeah, they did the whole thing. And what was the, so I, uh, one of the doctors. If you're going to go that far, go buy steroids. Well, Come on, dude. yeah, they, dude, what are you doing? They, didn't they test like, uh, I, I could have sworn, and I, of course the documentary, so it could be a little biased, but I do think a doctor came on and they said that they, Tested all this, you know, black market breast Found milk. Found a whole, a whole bunch of bad yeah. shit. Yeah, it. I want to say like fifty percent of it was like no bueno, right? Yeah, they or some people cow's milk and doing all kinds of other shit, like telling you that like it's they'll cut it. it, they'll cut it with like cow's milk or soy protein, or yeah. it had like bad bacteria in it or went bad. Yeah, imagine yeah. giving that to your baby. I know. Dude. Oh no, yeah, it's these crazy kn knucklehead body blows. Listen, <laughs> uh, with the holidays, right? So we're here. It's the day after Thanksgiving. I'm in the. Uh, the thankful mood, mm. and I want to th mm. I want to thank all of our drama free listeners. Oh yeah, oh. and which I, is ninety nine point nine 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 percent. Yes, of all but of every them. once thank in a while we get one of you mother effers that are just not this way. And <laughs> this, I, what's wrong with you? So I got this lady dude the other day. This is like a few days back. Stupid lady. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get it. She comes in the DM and she is, uh, and I don't even remember what the post or what I said. It was obviously in the the height of this this political climate. It just this is it's brought oh, out. Oh, it was this. It was the stripper political thing. Uh, it was uh, the. Was, I don't even remember. That was a joke. I don't know. It was something I said first. Yeah. So something I. It was did, a total joke. I don't remember what it was, but you know, I was I was getting shit from it in my DMs, and every once in a while when. I'm in a mood. I'll fire back. And so I'm firing back with this lady back and forth. And then after it's like killed a bunch of my time and I'm not going anywhere, I'm just like, whatever, I'm done talking to this chick. So I, st I stopped the conversation. I didn't even res respond to like the last ones because we were just getting nowhere. Like we just did not see eye to eye on stuff. And she was making some accusations about our, us and our company and who we are that she, just, she doesn't, she was completely wrong. So I'm like, I'm not going to, I don't feel the need to defend myself. So I moved along from it. So the next day, uh, I, I get into work and I'm waiting for Sal to get to work and I'm going through his Instagram, catching up on his his funny memes and stories. He follows me. I do. Every once in a while, I follow and pay attention. And so you had done a That's post. Nice. You did a post the last your last post at this time that you had did. You were you were telling people that you were moving over to Parlor. Not that I was leaving Instagram. No, no, that you're just moving like, your, some of your content over to Parlor because it's been censored. And you wrote a long old post explaining why, and I thought it was a good post. And on there, I see you've got this conversation going back and forth. And sure as shit, it's the fucking same lady. Oh. And she's firing with you, making racist, sexist things about our business, trying to say that we were all white males. It's yeah, like, let's, have, our audience is all white males, and that this is an all white male uh, business uh, company. Not knowing that, first of all, the, you have Doug 
Adam, Justin, and me. Doug and Adam, I mean, Doug and Justin, yes, they're white. Adam and I, not really. <laughs> but we have, like, 90% of the rest of our staff is female or minority. Yeah. yeah. It's like right. she knows nothing of us. Right, right. So it's, I see- Not that, that we pick them out for that, by the way. Right, yeah. I could give a shit. Right. If they're good employees, they're hired. Right. So th- I see that, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm a little annoyed by it. Then, okay, the next the next day, I, I totally forgot to say anything to Sal. I didn't say anything to him. Then the next day, I'm uh, in the morning. I'm brushing my teeth. My sister's uh, messaging back and forth. My sister runs the customer service side of the business, and she tells me, um, "She's like, oh my god, I'm in the middle of responding to a couple messages about Sal." And I'm like, "Oh God!" I said, "It wouldn't happen to be." And I say the lady's name, and she goes, "Oh my God! How did you know?" And I'm like, "Are you kidding me? This lady has now moved over to customer service, and my sister is now dealing with it." And then I get to work. And I, so I tell the guys, I'm like, Sal, guess what? I was like, I, and I tell him, I saw the lady on your, your, uh, Instagram. Then I talked to Cassie on customer service. She said she's talking, dealing with this lady. And then you enlighten me and go like, oh, have you seen the forum this morning? In the Mm. private forum, she does this whole post about how (laughs) it was targeting me. She was targeting you, blasting you in her own forum. About how I lie all the time. You just lie. It lies like a blanket statement. Yeah, he's just a big liar or whatever. So I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see what people say in the forum. Oh, my. That did not go as planned. She had a wild hair. Yeah. Really just lots of venom. She got ham. By the way, she's she, she knows Doug. So I guess she was friends with him back in the day. Good job, Doug. Yeah, yeah. Way, way to pick, bring that way one to the party. <laughs> way to pick your friends. All Doug's Doug. friends are crazy. <laughs> uh, but no, she she's getting she gets hammered by people because in the forum because they're like, what are you talking about? You know what you're saying isn't true, whatever. And so everybody's like, give us an example. Give us an example of the time that you yeah. said Sal lies all the time. You're making a lot of accusations. We just want to be clear. Here. Yeah, where are the times he lies? So finally, after a hundred people pressed her. She she picked out the time. Do you remember when we were, yeah, we were the, watching the video of the whale yes. that almost swallowed the, <laughs> the kayaker? The, the worst example. This is where I wanted to ever. defend her. I was like, yeah, that's yeah. right. He lied about yeah, that. Yeah, he was, was so wrong. What and an I, idiot. Said, I said, what no, an idiot. I said, no, that the, that whale doesn't go hunting big fish. It's a baleen whale. That's, yeah. I said it on the podcast. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, she, Plankton, she's like, yeah. Usually he lied because killer whales and this kind of whale. I'm like, no, that's a baleen whale. But anyway, I could find it. And then there was another thing she said was, do you remember when I brought yeah. up that article about San Diego? How the a judge ruled that the strip clubs remained open down there, but the churches are still closed. Yeah, yeah. So I said that was crazy. Yeah. She's like, he lied about strip clubs being open and churches being closed. I said, no, it's not a lie, dude. Yeah. So she totally has no idea. Oh, I think I, she just pissed literally off. Literally an article. Yeah, that was yeah. the best two examples of Sal Life. Like, <laughs> whales and stripper clubs. You're gonna go there? <laughs> yeah. Like this health and fitness yeah. podcast. Uh, that's so we it. You're dead share our it. opinions all day, and you're gonna go after him being yeah. a liar for yeah. strip clubs. I'm not and a whale whales. expert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You should so, stop. Hey, you should stop acting like one, bro. Damn. You know, yeah, I guess it You're doesn't right. take a lot That's these days. I'm yeah. getting tired of that shit. Push somebody <laughs> off. <laughs> you just say that because I, I know I was in the, I was in the, her DMs like firing it up. Like, yeah, he lies all the time to me. I can't get him to stop. <laughs> 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 it's a good time. You just go with it. That's what I think is the, the best is people that, and Justin got one the other day too about me, about talking too much. And I'm like, uh, wait, yeah. wait, hold on. Someone told him you, you talked yeah, to him? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're just saying that like, how do you feel about like, does, does Adam realize he talks about himself all the time or something like that? And I'm just like, <laughs> I tried to turn it into like, well, Adam needs oh, no, to was talk a, to Adam that, about that. That was yeah. a private text between you and I. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> you're the one that did that. <laughs> yeah. I'm all self I should have been now. aware it was Salami Stabone. Oh, oh God. Your alias. That's so, my other yeah, alias. That's hilarious. That I, I, my favorite is when people complain to me about you guys. Like, yeah, yeah. What do they oh, think I'm gonna do? I love that. That's why I always like, I always bring that to the surface because they think like we're gonna have this little like, you know, like conversation, like talking trash about you. Guys. You know what? That's the like, same. I'm gonna tell them like right away. You know, like we're pals. Like, no, oh, no, no, no. You're right. Justin, you know what? That's just, the same. That's just like you know, it's like when your kid comes in, like is trying to get away with something. What the other parents said no to. Like the two parents aren't fucking talking and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so you get this little inside joke or whatever. Yeah, it's like yeah. no, no. no. Like, I'm gonna tell them everything. That cracks me up. Oh yeah. man, yeah. I, no, people are funny, dude, yeah. on the internet. They're really, they're really pr- pretty annoying. I get yeah. some, I get some pretty interesting comments. The worst are on YouTube. I don't even read those anymore. No, because it's always about how buffed I'm not. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, well I think this, people are just angry. I think this year too. This year has just brought it out. I mean, everybody that I've talked to yeah. is just like. I, I, never once have I have I felt at least in in my thirty nine years have I felt like we have drawn a line in the sand about like who's side. I mean, I know a lot of people that have friends that they have lost this year because of yeah. like politics and shit like that. It's never been so divisive ever. I think no, it's and- just it's hilarious to me that you think that like whatever you're reading or listening to is one hundred percent fact. Like you got to check yourself, you yeah, because like it like yep. any. 
anything that you're consuming has a bias. So you have to admit that right away. That's why I'm not like, I'm, I don't, I'm really uncertain at the end of the day, but I, I tend to believe and be swayed in this direction. That's where I'm at. But I know that it's, it's based off of logic and common sense. I'm going to lead with that. Yeah. And you also have to own a few different things. Like if you're willing to throw away uh, friendships, relationships, because of uh, politics or opinions on different things, your priorities are in the wrong place. They totally are. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll use an example that has nothing to do with those two, with politics or, or, or all that stuff. I'll talk about uh, of the field that I am most passionate in, that I've worked in the longest, which is health and fitness. And I have family members who, I mean, I can objectively say are shortening their lives because they eat terribly or they smoke cigarettes or they don't exercise. These are people in my family. Now, am I going to be such an asshole that I'm going to ham like I got to hammer them so that I ruin my relationship? Yeah. Or am I going to allow them to live their lives? It's their journey yeah. and, and 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 cherish what I can foster with them. You know, like when I go to my parents, you know what I used to do when I first got into fitness? When I first became a trainer, I would like take stuff out of my parents' cabinets. Like, nah, you guys shouldn't be. And it was like straining our relationship where they were like hiding food from me. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, that's not good. No. You know, that's not good at all. It ruins the relationship between us. And so it's like, okay, they're going to live yeah. their life. That's their life to live. I have to accept that if I want to have this relationship with this person. And it's like that with all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, it's like understand where they're coming from. Allow people to have different opinions and move on with what you're doing. You yeah. know, like just focus on whatever is making your life better and acknowledge that other people have other ideas. Yes, yes. Now, did you guys have any rules set for this Thanksgiving? Did like so, I mean, because it's it's so heightened right now, like did you guys set any rules with family ahead of time? Like, listen, this Thanksgiving we're have it's about a family it's about us it's not about politics it's not about what's going on with election bullshit it's not have you did you guys set rules like that or are you just going to roll roll the dice well, my, we're isolated right now so it because we have the baby and the you know everything's you know the way it is so just Jessica me uh, and the baby but normally with my family at some point um topics are going to come up that are controversial one I'll tell I'll say this about my family I I love so much my family is values the tightness that we have so much that we could argue and fight and whatever. And it's never a question that we're, we're still family. And at the end of the day, we're going to hug each other, say goodbye, and it's not going to be that big of a deal. So topics in my family do come up and we do get into these big whatever. And at some point, all of us realize like whatever, and we just stop the conversation. So we don't ever really set rules like that, you know, with our gatherings. What about you, Justin? Yeah, so it's sort of an unwritten rule, but now that we've gotten in enough scuffles about like politics or like other ideas about like, you know, COVID or whatever, like all these things going on in the world, uh, we've kind of come to understand that, okay, we're just going to like keep all of that out of here. Yeah. You know, we're not going to do that. It's going to ruin the the vibe and the it's environment. You and, it's you and your brother that are at odds, right, with yeah. it, right? You guys are the ones that are polar opposite, yeah. you and your brother. Uh, yeah, and, and the thing is, like, we again, there's there's differences of ideas and, and perspectives, but I mean, we're not that far off. It's just a matter of like, uh, there's there's a few things that are very divisive, you know, that we're going to bring up, and uh, it, you know, and then my my dad and him were, were a little bit more at odds with it, and would would jab at each other more. Like, I wouldn't jab. We'd have good conversations, like we'd have really like intense conversations, but the, then it would like sort of let the air out of of the awkwardness of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, versus where it, it was more, uh, you know, an unhealthy environment, the way that they're both kind of like chipping at each other. Yeah. So I actually step in when they start doing that and I make fun of both of them. <laughs> and that's my move. Nah. And then it diffuses it. Nah, yeah. What cool. about your family? Your family? Um, you know what? They're, they're, they're not very political, dude. It's actually been, it's, it's more my friends, right? So there's a, my closest friend. Yeah, but you guys are so close, right? Doesn't yeah. Matter. It's actually kind of cool. Like I, I, I've been really, I mean, we're, we're very different. Like it, it, this la this year for sure. And is like, I mean, we go back till we were kids, right? So, um, you know, I've known known these two guys forever, and it wasn't until this year d did it like you really realize, like, wow, how different we really are. Like, we there's a lot of stuff that came up mm -hmm. uh, this year that we just don't agree with at all. But what's great is that we are so close that we can get into this like really heated like thread back and forth. Mm. And what I like about it though is that you know I have a lot of my buddy who I have the most uh, uh, opposing views to is a you know high school principal. He's got his master's degree from um, up north. Really, really smart guy. 
I like to actually battle with them because I I'm very open minded to have my mind changed. So even though I'm arguing with somebody, I'm not in, I'm not digging my heels in of like you can never change my yeah. mind. Like come at me with what your your Give me best some compelling facts. Yeah, exactly. Let me hear your best argument mm. for why you think this is good or bad, and you know I'll go back. And so we do we go at it back and forth. And at the end of it, we always end up being like, okay, how are the kids doing? And we transition out of that. And then after that, it's like kind of lighthearted jabs. You know, That's like, when it's fun. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I call him a communist all the time and stuff like that. Right? <laughs> so, you know, and he does that all the time. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. we, we go That's back. That's always fun. Yeah, we, <laughs> we have, we are, we're <laughs> playful about it. And it's not like this angry, we don't want to see each other, don't talk to each other. I, and I, because he's intelligent, I really enjoy that we have opposing views because I, I feel like either one, he does change my mind about things or it just strengthens my argument mm -hmm. on my point because I have to defend myself. And so I like it. I enjoy it. And, and, and that I think is healthy and okay. And then you have an example, like my sister was sharing me, sharing with me, I was telling her this exact same story and her best friend and her are completely at odds with this stuff. And they go all the way back to childhood. And she goes, the difference is though, she's not read on any of it. So she's like, she'll, she'll be, and she's loud about it. She'll mm -hmm. be loud about something. And then my sister will challenge her. And then she has no response except for getting angry about it. And she's like, listen, like, she's like, I don't like talking about politics with you and I stay out of it. But if you're going to be this loud about it, don't you think you need to at least right. read up on what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Because I've read what you're talking about and let me tell you how it really is. And then she doesn't know what to say. And it's like, you know, that's where it can get annoying is if you have somebody who's so passionate of one side or the other, but then has nothing to support it with. Yeah. Tell me what to be angry about. Yeah. You know, like that's just the, the sentiment. I, I see this all the time. It's frustrating. Yeah. You know, they do. The, so uh, Arthur Brooks, um, he's got this great podcast, uh, The Art of Happiness, I think it's called. Didn't and you just do a show with him? I did. It's uh, it's it'll be airing like a week or two. He had me on his oh, show. Oh, cool! Yeah, love the guy. Uh, he's such a smart dude and so like one of the most connected people ever. Like the guy speaks at the White House and meets with all these amazing people. He's a social scientist, and he did this podcast where he talked about studies that show that people who talk about politics all the time are annoying as hell. Everybody thinks they're annoying. Yeah. Even people who like to talk about politics don't like other people who like to talk about <laughs> politics. So as I'm listening to it, I'm like, I'm feeling targeted. Yeah, you know right. I mean? I'm like, self -awareness I'm going yeah, on yeah, right oh, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah, I texted him afterwards. I'm like, did you make this episode for me? And we yeah. started laughing. I'm like, I guess it is annoying, you know, when you well, hear other it's, people. It's so much like it the sports annoying. for nerds analogy that I've given about it. It just, it's, if you're not the, because I feel like you're you're typically one or the other. Like you, if you're not that guy who's heavy into politics, then you're the, the dad who's like heavy into sports and then you you defend your team to at all cost on why they're better. I do, there are a few people that I like to mess with and go back and forth. Mike Matthews, love going back and forth with him on the stuff we disagree on because he can take it and mm. so can I. So we'll hammer each other. And he's really intelligent. He's so. a very smart guy. Connor is a great guy too. Connor, he's got a, a, a podcast also. I've been on a few times and he, him, and I will disagree on uh, on market economics. So he's like super. He likes much more regulation. I'm much more free market, and so we'll go back and forth. And him and I were talking recently, and so we we mess with each other. Let's give you an example of the stuff that we'll do. He, he, we were talking about like natural ways to raise testosterone. I said, well, you could also uh, have a more of a free market approach because that'll raise your testosterone. And so we we just mess with each other yeah, yeah. about stuff, and it's fun. It's fun to do that, but otherwise, it's you know, yeah, it, yeah. Can, it can be pretty damn. Annoying. Yeah. Anyway, I want to talk to you guys about uh, another study that came out recently. This was in Science Daily um, on protein intake. So this study has confirmed what a lot of people have been talking about for a while, which is that protein, a high-protein diet, uh, re increases energy expenditure. So so let's say you eat a 2,000-calorie a, a diet that is low in protein versus a 2,000-calorie diet that is high in protein. Okay. Yeah. Mm. The high protein diet will result just because it's got higher protein will result in higher energy expenditure, increased fat oxidation, and more of uh, and your higher more of a negative fat balance. So in other words, this all calories are not created equal in the sense because protein calories encourage calorie burning, whereas now, others don't. Is mm. that because of the thermogenic effect on yes. it and the digestive process, mm. just because it's more work for the body to like convert it? Uh, yes. So it's got a higher thermogenic effect. It, it increases energy expenditure. And then, of course, on top of it, you have the satiety effects. Uh, when people increase their protein intake, uh, they naturally tend to want to eat less uh, also, which I thought was pretty interesting. But this is pretty pretty cool, right? Just mm -hmm. e have people eat more protein. Yeah. 
and see what, and I mean, this is a strategy I deal with clients uh, towards the end of my career. I started just, this would be the one step. If just I, just eat your that. protein. No, no, we just talked nice about that. Yeah, way to do that. See what happens. Did, did you guys see uh, Tesla getting uh, released to where it'll be? Is it S&P, right? 500, where like if investors, is that right, Doug? <clears throat> S&P. Yeah. So they it's just- It's going to be in the S&P 500 now? Yeah. So I got, dude, there's people that believe- Tesla's weird, There's dude. people yeah. that believe that it's going to go 3X from where it's How? At. They think, don't they think he's going to be like one of the top three, like uh, in terms of like Bezos and all that of richest people in the world yeah. soon? But how though? It doesn't make any sense. It's not like it's this, it's like a quarter of the fraction of a size of like General Motors. I mean, yeah. are they that profitable? I don't think so. Well, they're making so. batteries is an, another move now, right? Yeah. That's well, another initiative. And then also remember the tech. I mean, it's okay. not, it's like a total tech company. It's, it's like right. a startup almost. And so think of the, think of the marketing after We talked about this, what they were doing. They were starting to put into cars already, which was this ability to be able to track everything that you're doing. No car will do that better than Tesla, by the way. Mm, it's yeah. a it's a it's a driving computer, right? Yeah, now. the analytics. Yeah, yes. they'll be able to sell. That, so I'm think sure. of how value that's going to valuable it's going to be to like be able to track everybody's every move they make, where they drive, what stops uh, stops they make, what where they fill up on gas, what grocery yeah, stores they park in. Humans my, are the new commodity. My conspiracy theory uh, yeah. cackles are shaking. Right I now. know, but I mean, just uh, to me, that's where it, it it screams more than just. Just a you know a uh, automobile business. It's not a GM. True. You know what I'm saying? It's it's it, the and but bro. It's five right now as of this podcast, like five hundred and sixty dollars a share. People yeah. think three X. That's dude. crazy. So we like get fifty. It's going to be like Amazon. It, yep. it definitely oh. wasn't because they just released their own tequila. You know, wait, like, who? that can't be it. Yeah, Tesla has like a tequila. I it's saw like that. I a saw lightning Br bolt. I saw uh, Brendan actually bottle. got it. Yeah, really? Yeah, and it's. Yeah, I'd be in interested to see how it tastes, he, but I'm sure it's good. Dude, Elon is he's so cool in the yeah. sense that everything, cool stuff everything he makes is like people want just because it's him. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And he's and he does stuff that's so smart from a marketing perspective. Like, didn't he make the Tesla? Which I don't know what model it was. Didn't he change the price to sixty nine thousand four hundred and twenty dollars? So sixty nine four twenty. I he did, did that up. No. I yes, he did. I did not know that. You didn't yes, know that? That's got to be a myth. Look that up, Doug. That's funny. Look it up. Look, no way. Yes, he did. He did it on purpose, like and he did it. Tequila. He did it as a joke. He does shit like this. Really? Like, yes. A little Easter I, egg I wouldn't for put you. it past them, though. Yeah, because no. I mean, he, he had those like all those uh, software updates where you can get them to dance, and, like the cars, ludicrous to spin speed, around and yeah, exactly. Mode like he does. Really? Shit. Yes, dude. Sixty nine thousand four twenty. Get out! I want to see this. Okay, Doug. look it up, Doug. Where did you hear that? I've never, I, I've was, never heard you say I that. I read before. it. Somebody posted it. Four twenty. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Am I like such a I'm not kid. tripping, Doug. Come Is on. It? Hey, more fucking lies. No. More no. Oh. more of your lies. No, watch this. Yeah. Yeah. You're, uh, you're giving this lady fuel. No, 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 no. I'm going to look it up bro, right bro, now. Bro, bro, don't get give caught. Me some, give me some whale hey, don't stats. Get, yeah, don't get caught in another lie, dude. Yeah. Right, right. Elon tweets, the Model S will be priced at 69420 <laughs> when was this? And it says here, this is in TechCrunch because he's a child. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. No. And, and, and look, and look what he says in his tweet. This is this is yeah. See, there it is. What does it say, Doug? I can't read from here. Sixty. The gauntlet has been thrown down. The prophecy will be fulfilled. Model S price changes to sixty nine thousand four twenty tonight. Yep. He, that was his tweet. That, oh, that's just one month ago. Yeah. So this is somewhat recent. Yep. No shit. Yeah. I did not. No, that's he really does funny. shit like this. I, you know like, what I, mean? I like him, bro. I do. I like, like, like let me ask you a question. Like do you think Tesla would be worth five hundred and eighty dollars a share if he wasn't? If it wasn't Elon? No. Well, I, I think today we've talked about this before. It just uh, we're in a different time where you want to know who's running the company. Like, so you know more mm. about these companies. Yeah. So. so I mean, what else? He's still into the bore. Like he boring um, uh, holes underneath the like trying to, to create a whole another way to travel to his factory Hyperloop. Plant. Yeah. And then he's also doing uh, SpaceX on top of that. And then uh, what was the other thing that he was doing? There was one more thing. Neuralink. Neuralink, yeah. yeah. Exactly. How, that I, one scares the hell out of so me. So I mean, if that's all connected to the Tesla stock, I mean, I would think that there's your there's your. Re I don't think it is no, connected. Not. No, they're not. No. will be different. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's funny about this? It's like people are like, you're going to track me through my phones? You're going to give me an, a, a vaccine or whatever? Hell no, you can track me. You know, No way. And then Elon's like, like we're going to go- I'm going to put, put a chip in your head. We're going to put computers <laughs> in your brain. Oh, cool. I'll sign up for that. <laughs> yeah, but he's cool though. That's he what does it is. 69 for 20. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Dude. Elon, Elon. You know, he's, he's like- He's Tony Stark, dude. Did yeah. you see the uh, you know, JP Sears and his buddy that he's had, the comedian he has all the time on uh, right now? Yeah. And they did the one and he said, the, the guy said he did a floppy disk in his back. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
floppy disk. Yeah, is he, right where the tramp uh, stamp goes. He's like, yeah. I, just, I just put a floppy disk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, like like Apple dude, the content that they've been yeah. putting out lately, bro, yeah. has got me. Hey, bro. speaking of cars, uh, did, you were gonna, you were going to tell a story about you racing something? Oh, God, you're going to sell me out like that, yeah. dude. I don't know if I was going to share that story. Why? This is well, this Adam's cool guy story. Come on. No, okay. So, so Sal sent a text over the other day that was the, the expensive car thing. Do you remember what you sent over? Oh, this this investor said you should not spend more than uh, what was it, ten percent of your gross income? Yeah, on something a, like that, right? So, so I, if you make five hundred grand, then you buy a fifty thousand dollars car is the is the right. most expensive car you should buy. Right, right. So you know, uh, so I, I know. You, you, <laughs> and Adam's like, you oh. threw that to just shame no, me. No, no, he did. He <laughs> sent that the morning, the morning after <laughs> I, I I raced the Rover, right? So here's and it, so that's Katrina's car, right? That was a Christmas gift like two year two years ago. And, it, you know, the average person would be like, "That's why? It's a waste of money to blah, 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 blah. Okay. But here's the thing. If, if, you, if you didn't have that, you wouldn't have been able to experience this moment that I got to experience that, <laughs> okay, that was here. worth the sticker price in itself. By it. So I'm driving to pick my sister up from the airport, and it's like, I don't know, nine. nine it's, a, it's really late at night. So there's, no, there's hardly any cars on the road. Okay, so let's just say that. And I am coming out of my neighborhood. I'm heading down the expressway. And I'm right, I'm two lights from getting on the freeway. And I'm like, it's late at night. I'm like pajamas and beanie. And I'm, I think I'm listening to country music. And, you know, they got the car seat in the back and shit. And it's like a nice night. So the windows are down a little bit. And I'm probably <laughs> listening to my music a little bit louder than normal. Hmm. Enjoying my me time, right? And I, and I love driving this car. This guy, I mean, the, the Range Rover is like one of my favorite cars that I've ever owned that I love to drive. This thing just it handles amazing and it gets on it. And so... Up rolls this young guy. He's probably you know in his early thirties, maybe in late twenties, and he's and he's driving a BMW Seven Series. Yeah, you, you got to show him what time it is. So, no, I didn't. Did that was rev it up. That ring. So, and I and I'm not I'm not really <laughs> fully paying attention. I see him in the corner of my eye. I'm actually still into my music. Never my, race the older guy in a car. So, I learned that as a young man. So, so I was kicking. So ass. I'm like I'm actually just looking at the stoplight, and I think that it's my turn to go. So I start to inch forward. So he must have. Th- thought that was oh, me like being you're creeping on him right creeping on him to edge up on the lighter with that so when the light goes green he just gets on it dude and yeah. that, that's the seven series is either a it's a eight that, isn't that a, like that's it's like, a v8 twin turbo isn't that 400 something horsepower oh the, the the big the big seven series bmws are quick look up what it is doug i think they're a, it's a v8 twin turbo i think is what is in that it's a it's a fast car right so i, I shopped for one of those a while back and really like that model. So he pulls up, young guy. He's listening to rap music loud, and and you could tell he's like <laughs> rap versus country. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> just, just a line in the sand. So he <laughs> he gets on it, and you know I'm like, ah, oh, this is perfect timing. Now, for- he's yeah, he's, and he's tickling your freaking oh you know, yeah, and I just your ego a little yeah, bit. yeah, and I you know I, I normally drive the truck or the the little Mercedes around most it's of the time. Is it a, it's a V8, but yeah. I think it's a twin turbo for the. The uh, uh, X7 one or whatever it is, okay. right? Right. Not the X7. Excuse me. The the seven series. What is it, Doug? I don't know. Let me look. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you had it already. There, V8 powered 750i. Uh, it's just a 4.4. You try to make all it wheel drive. Yeah. No, no, no. So anyway, so he takes off. Right. He gets. Yeah. He gets on it, and so he's got a good like, I don't know, few hundred feet head start before I even realize that. Oh, we're gonna get on this, right? And so I freaking I drop the thing over to sport mode and just step on that rover, and you see, and he's he's not letting up at all, and it only takes I don't know a few hundred yards, and I'm I catch up to him and blow past him, and then up is the next light before we get on the freeway. Oh, now so, you do another one. And so yeah, so we lock up, and he's like, you could tell he's a young guy. He got so excited, like the old dad with the fucking car he's seat. Like, oh, what's <laughs> yeah, that, dude? yeah, it was what's like, up, oh, he's like he was looking at me like, holy shit, like that thing's that right, and so. We go and to get, get the car seat in the back. Yeah, yeah, car best. seats on the back and everything. So it's then like we, late at night, you put sunglasses on. We <laughs> get we get on that on ramp, dude. That's and so say. we we at this now now it's fair, right? Because now we know it's on because we both were racing right here and it's you know no one's on the freeway. We're and when light turns green, we turn on the on ramp, and I'm on that shit before I'm even off that on ramp. That car's doing 110, dude. So within a quarter mile, that car is over 100 miles an yeah. hour. So and he doesn't even come close, and you just see me pulling away till I'm about 135. I look down at it, and I'm just smoking in that car. That thing, and I tell you, I haven't had an adrenaline rush feeling like that. <laughs> I can't even tell you the last time I felt like that, where I was like, my heart was racing like crazy, and I had this big grin on my face, and I'm like, worth it. Yeah, came worth, worth it, it dude. worth it, worth the sticker price, 100. <laughs> percent came, right? came home and made love to my wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come here, baby. Steak. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna get five minutes. Of 
love oh it. God. But I that, oh, that was that was literally that that late night. It was like 10, 10 o'clock or whatever time it was. And then first thing in the morning, I wake up and I get that text message from Sal <laughs> oh, right hilarious. away. And I'm like, "Fuck you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, don't never, you don't know me. Yeah, you'll never know what it's like to hey, feel that feeling right hey, there. Hey, I know exactly what that. That's the male ego. I have it. It's very alive in me. Yeah, this is yeah. why when I hang out with you guys for too long. We do stupid yeah, shit it, like that. It rubs that, off on you. Remember that time we were in the parking lot? I, I don't know. know. I'm gonna get somebody. <laughs> I'm gonna get somebody DMing me about how irresponsible that was. Super, get out of here, dude. We were in a park. We were in a parking lot going to get, be in a podcast. <laughs> And, and we were in a rental car. And we were in a, a rental car. Yeah. And just like, just I don't know what happened. We're okay, so like, let's just start driving I'm over. The, I'm the biggest child. Curbs of all and us. shit. That's fine. It wasn't. It was, all of us were down. Yeah, for that. come yeah. on, man. I've done. Worse I, stuff. I, I'm not kidding though. I really had this adrenaline rush from it that I can't. I can't recall the last time that I had like my heart racing like that and pumping and goosebumps. All of yeah. it was like, oh. oh. See, that's my that that's my dad. My dad's yeah. always he's always been like that. Like if I had my friends over, my mm -hmm. dad would come start hanging out with us, and it's some point it would turn into like a pissing contest yeah. and my dad would beat everybody you know and i was always like god man stop oh. <laughs> all the time he would take us outside be like can you lift the shovel by the end put a brick on the end see if you could lift it nobody could, he would do it and they'd be like well you're dead <laughs> like come on dad leave well, us alone i just remember being a so when i was you know 16 17 18 i was driving around the the souped up you know acura integra that i had put a bunch of money in the motor and stuff and so Ring. Yeah, any ch yeah, any chance I could get to race anybody, I was excited. <laughs> and heaven forbid you pull up next to like an older guy that was in like a sporty car that would be willing to race, you yeah. get so excited as a young guy. So yeah, I felt see for me it was always the drag racing part. It's that initial like like off off the line kind of a feeling that rush was yeah. everything for me. So that's why I got like the the muscle car, the muscle truck where it was like it was all torque. I mean, I was like I would just smoke people for maybe like, you know, 100 yards and then boom, done. They <laughs> yeah. just passed me. Dude, you know cars are fast nowadays. Oh, yeah. Like so, because um, when I was a kid, when we were kids, it's zero to sixty in like under six seconds for a normal car was considered pretty quick. Yeah. Now, like I'm not even exaggerating. You buy a minivan, they they got some of them are almost that fast. Right <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, here's this guy still making. He's always trying to sell. He's trying to make a case minivans. for a minivan. He's, yeah. I didn't even get one. Hey, I'm on to you, bro. Players, dude. Yeah, like, he's he's. He's, he's yeah. playing. They got an outlet you can plug in your electric guitar, dude. He's, it's he's, cool. He's been planting seeds for the last year and a half, dude. So when he rolls up to work one day, we'll be like, oh, I guess it's kind of cool. Nah, you know, you know, I, don't, you know I don't give a shit. I already got, I got the Suburban uh, anyway, no, so I don't, I don't even did. care. You did, but yeah. they make them hella fast. The cars back in the days were not nearly as Although there were some fast ones. You guys know how fast. Remember the Lamborghini Countach? That was like one of my favorites. Countach. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. That was the car. That's still a fast car. I think it's 450 horsepower from yeah. back then. Well, the range was 550, dude. Yeah. That I thing know. just straight moves. Yeah, yeah. Dang. I know. It's, it's pretty damn, pretty damn fast. First question is from Josh Kaur. Is there such thing as non-responders to resistance training? Sure. Have you ever come across them before? I wouldn't sure. say non-responders. Josh Kaur. I think if, if your body doesn't have the ability to adapt to stress, you're probably in a really, really bad position. Everybody's body... I mean, there's an exception to every rule, right? Not a non-responder. Like, that would mean no response. What's, have you ever trained like someone where they got build zero? Muscle? No, like, I mean, it, my point is that there's always... There's there's somebody out there with some degenerate disease that doesn't allow them to build muscle. <laughs> degenerative. <right>? Yeah, degenerate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're it could, degenerate. Hey, they could be a degenerate also. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. There's, there's probably someone out there that has, that's a degenerate also. Right? Yeah. That affected his personality. Hey, that's why I can't build any muscle. You have yeah. 15 beers this morning, that's <laughs> you no, know, it's Make okay. No, there's, there's always going to be that person, yeah. right? There's somebody out there that just that just can't. But I mean, everybody that I've trained, um, that's not the reason. There's normally other reasons why that person is, and they and we all. I mean, I remember thinking that I was this guy, right? I mean, I'm sure you did too. I'm sure yeah. all of us went through a phase, Mister Pro Physique Competitor, at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. I I believed at one point that you know I wasn't going to build build. Uh, muscle or couldn't build muscle or was a non-responder or a hard gainer, right? Those right. all kind of, they felt that way. But more often than not, it's it, it's something related to your program or nutrition. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost always one or the other or more likely both if you feel like you just yeah. don't respond. Lack of sleep, that would be the other one. I, sure, I've actually sure, trained sure. people who just, they did good diet, good training, couldn't figure out why they couldn't build muscle, finally gets to the conversation about sleep and it's like, oh, you're up all night playing video games. Let's get some sleep and see what happens. Yeah, usually non people who think they're non-responders, it's because they're doing something wrong. In fact, I'll say this right now. If you think you're a non-responder, try following a program like MAPS Anabolic and then send me a message and let me know if you still think 
your non-responder. Proper workout programming makes such a tremendous difference uh, in terms of how much bo- how much muscle you build. Now, there is a spectrum. There's definitely a spectrum. And the spectrum is this, right? On the left of the spectrum is people who just they, – they build muscle very slowly, and it's very challenging for them to build muscle, extremely challenging. On the right – are the genetic freaks, the people who build muscle like it's their job. They just they, they do look a, they look at exercise and they build they, yeah, just those are your professional bodybuilders typically, your high level athletes. Like we all maybe have met people like this in our lives where it's just it's insane how they build muscle. Most people are nowhere near the left or the right. Most people are somewhere in the middle. I'd say like eighty five percent of us are more in the middle. And maybe 1% is at the very, very ends. So the very middle, we all build some muscle. We all get stronger. We all burn some body fat. But if we don't do the right programming, we don't eat right, uh, it's not going to happen nearly as fast. So the non-responder argument, when I hear people say, I'm, I'm a non-responder, I, yeah. I, I look at their workout, I look at their diet, their sleep. You've just been doing the same thing too long, uh, for the most part. Most of these I've run into, it's like they're spinning their wheels, mm-hmm. and they keep applying the same uh, programming, the same nutrition, and, and, and they're, they're thinking that they got to do a more disciplined job, uh, and they got to they gotta intensify it a bit somehow, but they haven't really you know, branched out of that uh, playbook that they've had forever, and so to... A lot of times, to you, you got to like provide a new stimulus for your body to react to, and and that takes some work. So you do have to be able to have some knowledge or have some direction and good programming that'll take you in a different pos- uh, uh, position. I find this really common with under eaters, like people that just grossly under eat. This was me, like uh, until I started like tracking my food and calories, and then started to wear things like the, you know, back then it was the body bug today. They have the Fitbit and Apple watch to get an idea of like, what does my body burn? I have no, I had no fucking clue back then. And until I did that, I didn't realize like how grossly under consuming I was. I mean, I was just an active kid. I played sports. I loved to move around fast metabolism. Fast, yeah. Fast metabolism. And I, and I trained hard when I did lift and I just, and I thought I was eating good because I was I was eating protein and I was eating the and drinking the protein shakes and eating the bars and but it still didn't matter. They were, it was adding up to like twenty two hundred calories, twenty five hundred calories, maybe a high one, three thousand calories. That would be a high day when my lowest burning day was four thousand. You know, forty five hundred, five thousand calories because I was so active. And when you were under consuming that much for how much you move and burn. It's really hard for the body to adapt and build muscle. You're just not giving it the building box. You may be sending the right signal, so maybe you are following anabolic, and you're like, hey, I'm following one of these great programs, and I'm still not seeing more muscle build. The next place I would really look is nutrition, because I think that's the next common place that people are just under under reporting. Yeah, that happened to me as a kid. I'd, I'd be like, oh, oh, I need to eat protein, so I'd eat like a turkey and cheese sandwich. You know, like with just the sliced bread and I'd have like two right. slices of turkey. Right. And I remember when I first became a trainer, I started to learn about tracking and I'd be like, okay, let's see. I'm a hundred. And at the time, I think when I first started uh, as a trainer, I was 185 pounds. And I was like, okay, I need to eat 185 grams of protein a day. Let's see what that looks like. And I would add up my sandwiches, you know, and they'd be like 15 grams. Like, oh yeah, I need to, I need to definitely change the amount of food that I eat and the calories and the protein that I eat in order to hit those targets. So that that's, that's a big one. But the bigger one that I'm, I see with more people really is is their training. You know, I'll, I'll have people come to me and say, yeah. "Can't develop my butt, can't build my arms. I'm I'm not getting stronger. What's going on?" I look at the routine, and it's usually some kind of a body part split, maybe too much high volume, or maybe they're going to failure too often, or they're doing lots of they're machines doing hit training. Yeah, not the right exactly, not the right kind of workout at all. And that's exactly why I designed uh, the original MAPS program, which is MAPS Anabolic. I literally designed it specifically for people who have trouble building muscle. Follow that program. It's good workout programming. It builds muscle on most people. It speeds up the metabolism on most people. And here's the thing. Non-responders for fat loss, in my experience, tend to be the similar to the non-responders to building muscle. Both of them have trouble positively affecting uh, the ad- adaptation process. Um, and it usually has to do with diet, training, or sleep. Next question is from Thor Davey. What are the benefits of the floor press versus the traditional bench press press for those working out at home? You guys ever train the floor press consistently in your workout? 
I have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not consistently. Yeah. I, so I did it for a little while when I was trying I was trying to get to a 400 pound bench press. I never got there. I got up to I think 365 or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it did increase my bench press. It did get me to add another I think it was like 10 or 15, which is a big number when you're when you're reaching your limit mm-hmm. with the bench press and the benefits that I saw from the bench pre- from the floor press were this: it negates the leg drive, so it's all upper body pressing. Right, isolates it. Yeah, people don't realize that when you do a bench press, when you're maximizing your strength, um, there's a lot of leg drive that's involved. It's just activating those legs. When you're on the floor, you can't. If you do, you end up lifting your hips off the floor. So it's all upper body. It also forces you to pause at the bottom and focus on lockout. Lockout is the top of a bench press, mm-hmm. and for for strength athletes, so floor presses are super popular with power lifters. Super, it's a, it's a staple exercise for power lifters, specifically to train that lockout portion of the of the bench press. Where a lot of these guys will miss a top lift because they can't get that last two inches of their. Of their yeah, bench and I press. think that's probably why I didn't stick with it in my program quite as much. The lockout for me was never really the issue. Uh, it was mainly like at the bottom portion of the lift that I struggled the most. But this is definitely one of those I see like it. And, and uh, powerlifters do a great job of this of, of taking like components of that uh, entire lift and kind of breaking it apart. And so this this definitely like works specifically on. On that lockout portion and stabilizing and digging your way out of uh, you know that position once you stall. So I think that I think this question is coming from somebody who isn't necessarily doing it because they they're trying to find better benefits, but maybe because they have to because they don't have a bench. Right? They're at home. They're doing a home workout and they're doing floor so press. Your limiting range of motion is going to be my critique. So and it is. And so I don't I don't see a lot of value for the floor press for most people. Unless it's like a sticking point a power lifter and it's a very specific reason why you're doing this exercise, I don't see a lot of benefit into it, intentionally incorporating it for most people. And if you're asking this question because you don't have a bench and so of course you okay you you get on the floor and you press and so you're you're limited because of that then and I've had this before where clients are in a hotel room or they don't have that and they're like what do we do so what I do with them is actually like a floor press but then right before or right after so you can you can do a pre-exhaust or you can do it after you do the floor press I actually flip the dumbbells on their heads and actually have them do really deep push-ups to off, offset it off to offset it right so uh-huh. I take them through that full range of motion because I wouldn't want them to train off the floor all the time and shorten that range of motion up I would prefer that they go really deep and through full range of motion so one of the best Best ways to do that for a push up is to elevate your hands so you can go even deeper on the push up. So I would do those back to back. Yeah, now, yeah, I, I'd say I agree. I'd say the most carryover is to increase your bench press. Um, here's here's something else you want to keep in mind. I've heard people say, "Oh, it's safer on the shoulders," not necessarily because you're on the floor uh, and it's a you know, big, hard, you know, wide floor, or whatever. It I have found it in myself to sometimes limit my scapular movement or mobility Mm -hmm. because I'm on the floor. Because I'm on a bench, my shoulders are a little wider than the bench, so my scapula can fall together a little bit. So pay attention to that. If you do this, you still want to have your shoulders pinned down and back on the floor. Otherwise, you end up pressing with this rounded shoulder, and that can cause problems. If I had the option, I would have, if this is my client, and you were asking this question too, I I would actually have you get, um, if you, you know, maybe the bench is really expensive, I'd have you get a foam roll. Mm-hmm. And I actually have you put the foam roll down your spine or and a actually, half foam roll. Yeah, yeah, and bench mm-hmm. off of that. You know, bench off the the foam roll because that addresses your point, Sal. Because I agree, laying flat on the ground uh, will flatten out your back and a lot of times promote the forward shoulder because it's really tough to retract and squeeze in that position on the floor. So I, I would like to see that client on a on a foam roll over the floor. Next question is from Enjoy Five. What are your thoughts and opinions on cluster sets? How are they best utilized? How are they best programmed? What exercises do they work well with? Who was it that we had on here? Was it? I'm trying to remember. Was it John Meadows or was it Scott Stevenson? I think it was John Meadows. Was it John Meadows? No. It was one one of those two. I think it was Stevenson. Yeah, it was either Stevenson or... or, And, you know, I had to be honest that... uh, before that, uh, I hadn't really incorporated them that much. And I went on a kick after we had them on the show. This was like a year or two ago. And uh, I really I really enjoyed incorporating them into my routine. Um, but like anything else, the, the thing that I always uh, you know warn people with, you know, uh, 
exercises like this or um, techniques. Techniques. Outside, yeah. There you go. Techniques is a better word. Techniques like this is that you we do it and you're like just like me. I was like, oh wow, I got a nice response from it. Um, Notice a little bit of gains in my. I was using it for my arms. Uh, like bicep curls, I think that was the 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 example he used. With, oh, you know, it's arm day tomorrow. I'm going to do that, and I really liked it. And I did it for a few weeks and saw great results from it. Yeah, I, I would say that you're. Well, so first off, a cluster set is doing a set um, to fatigue, pausing for about 10, 10 seconds, and then seeing if you could do more. So that's what a cluster set is. I like them for hypertrophy. I like them for the pump. But Adam makes a great point. You get you stuck if you stick to it too long, it stops working. It's a great technique to inject into your routine when you haven't done them in a while, especially if you're in a phase like phase three of Maps Anabolic, for example, is is more focused on the pump. Mm-hmm. I like cluster sets for the pump. They do work strength stamina. So for performance, you build a little bit of strength stamina. I like to program them at the end of a workout, not necessarily at the beginning of the workout. And exercise-wise, they tend to work better for isolation movements than compound movements because there's so much fatigue involved. When you do these with compound movements, your form starts to break down. Um, And then, you know, with a compound movement... I would not recommend these for squatting, deadlifting, overhead pressing. These are great for bicep curls. Laterals. Yeah, tries to push down laterals. It's an interrupter. I mean, like a drop set or like strip set or one of these... Similar. Other other techniques that are are somewhat similar, but they're, you know, they're fun. And so I think that there's no harm in in incorporating if you've been in the gym, you've done, uh, you know, all the foundational things and it's something to kind of place in there for a short period of time. I think it does provide a new stimulus. That's good. So what I liked about it, right? So um, I believe his, if, and, and he looked, by the way, there's there's lots of different protocols, right? So depending on who you're talking to, uh, will you get a different like prescription of this is how to do a cluster set, right? Because I'm sure someone will hear this and be like, that's not how it's done. It's done like this. I believe the way uh, Stevenson or Meadows, whoever it was that we were talking to, I think the way he did it and the way I went and emulated afterwards was he does, uh, you pick a weight that you could do eight to 10 reps with, Mm -hmm. but you stop at four and you stop at four. And then I think you rest for five seconds in between. Now, what you find is that- You end up doing way more, right? Yeah, you end up doing way more. So a, a weight that you could do like eight to 12 reps, you now, you do them in blocks of four with these little five second rest periods in between. And what you find up, what you find out you end up doing is instead of doing eight to 12, you end up can do like 16 to 20. 20. Yeah. yeah, 16 to 20 for one set. And so that's kind of cool. It's, yeah. you know, so you end up getting, and, and that's where the real benefit comes from. I mean, when you talk about volume, you end up increasing the amount of volume on that exercise. It actually, I the way I programmed them in is it replaced my, my bicep workout completely. It wasn't just an exercise. It was just like, okay, if I'm doing bicep, this is all I'm doing for biceps. I literally just did cluster sets for my buys for a good three, four weeks and saw phenomenal results because of the increased volume. Because if I was just doing straight sets and with that type of weight, I would have only been able to do eight to 10 reps for three or four sets, where because I was doing it with the cluster sets, I was able to do you know five or six sets of that same weight and get more reps out. So I ended up increasing the volume of training that I was doing on the arms. That's the real benefit. But as after doing it for three or four weeks, my body then adapts to that and gets pretty pretty used to that weight and that way of training that by switching it back up again, I get great benefits again too. Next question is from Jamie Self. Are there adverse health effects when eating close to going to bed? Should you eat dinner hours before? Yeah, there's, there's some documented uh, negative effects from eating too close to bed. So the, the thing you want to focus on when you're going to sleep is allowing your body's natural circadian rhythm to register that it's time to sleep. Now, for most of human history, this was very easy. We lived outside. The sun would fall. Um, as the sun would, would kind of come down in the sky, the sky would get a little darker. So now our brain is getting the signal that it's getting darker. Time to sleep. We probably did not cook and eat our meals in the dark when our predators were around and we couldn't see them very well when they would smell the food. So we probably ate the food when the sun was still up and then you know we didn't eat it close to bed. And we do know that the organs are a part of your uh, circadian rhythm. So it's not just light that affects your circadian rhythm. It's also your internal organs. So you could be in a dark room, but you eat food 
now your stomach is digesting, and that's sending a signal to your brain that says... And you're horizontal as you're digesting. Right. Yeah, and you're also horizontal. It's it's not really good, and it'll affect your sleep negatively. So one of the, one of the, the most important things you could do in order to get good sleep is to allow your circadian rhythm to register that it's time for sleep. That means you don't eat anything about a couple hours before bed. You are in a dark... Your room is dark, your house is dark, or you wear blue light blocking glasses before you go to bed. Let your brain and body know it's time to sleep instead of doing this. Instead of lights are on, it's bright, I'm eating, oh, time to go to bed. You hit the pillow and you expect your your brain and body just to go to sleep. Yeah. It takes like an hour for it to start to register that. I think you can get away with this when you're younger and you're just kind of like, uh, you're not really paying close attention to all these types of things. Uh, I, I went through this process where I really had to now pay more attention because my digestion uh, was something that was getting affected. Uh, the types of food I was eating, I had to pay attention to. The timing of like if I went past a certain amount of time, it, it was starting to interrupt my sleep because of being horizontal and also having issues with acid reflux, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, maybe like it, it doesn't really. Uh, it doesn't look like it's a big issue, like when it's not affecting you right now, but it may become an issue later. It's something that I would highly suggest, you know, uh, you start to consciously move towards that direction because it will help enhance your sleep. It, it, it will benefit, uh, you know, all these other factors if you start to kind of incorporate these things that are just naturally, uh, you know, something to pay attention to. So it depends on who I'm talking to. Right. So because we say that right now. Right. And um, now I envision the, you know, we're working on our hard gainer stuff. Right. We're doing a lot of content for that. And I think about the kid who's like, Adam, um, I know I heard on Mind Pump that you guys say that it's, you know, not ideal for me to eat a big meal right before I go to bed. Um, and, you know, you're trying to get me to build muscle right now. And I'm at, you know, twenty five hundred calories and I'm, I need to be at thirty five hundred calories. Um, should I not eat? Because it's unhealthy. Yeah, that's that's the, that's a, it's still a trade off, but a hundred percent right point. So so it really and it, now and then take another client. You know, hey Adam, um, I my main goal is to be healthy and longevity, and you know, sure I want to build a little bit of muscle, sure I want to burn a little bit of body fat, but that's my number one priority. Um, you know, I only had so many calories today. It's now nine o'clock at night. I'm going to go to bed in the next half hour, hour. Should I eat or not eat? Oh, don't eat. It's not a big deal. Eat less calories today. It's not a big deal at all for that person, you know, especially if you're trying to lose weight then, right? So if someone's trying to lean out and they, you know, their, their calorie target for the day is normally 2,500 and they're at, you know, 1700 calories. So they technically could, they technically could eat more calories, but now it's already 930 at night and they go, um, Adam, I'm getting ready to go to bed in the next 30 minutes, but I'm only at 1700 calories. Should I eat again? No, don't eat. You don't need to. So it really depends on who I'm talking to. If, if your goal is you're trying to gain and you struggle to get the calories in, and then you hear us talking about how it isn't ideal to eat before bed. Well, it's not. And like Sal said, it's a trade-off. Like it is not the most ideal, but it's also for somebody who is ha having a hard time getting enough calories, you might find yourself having to do this sometimes. I know I did when I when I was trying to gain mm. and I was eating 5,000 calories a day, I needed every waking moment <laughs> yeah. of time to, to eat. Man, 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 as soon as I got up, I needed to start eating and then hopefully I'd be hungry in two hours later so I'd eat again and then happen every two hours all the way till, okay, I'm about to go to bed and I'm eating you know a peanut butter and jelly sandwich one, more, one time after I go to, right before I go to bed. Same here. It was mm. the same thing. In fact, I used to set my alarm in the middle of the night to wake up to, to have a shake. Shit. Yeah, yeah, which is hilarious. You know, I would recommend to this person that make your last meal before bed a shake. It's just easier to digest. Right. It's not going to affect you as negatively. It still is an effect, but it's not like eating a meal of like hard food that you have to really digest. No, that's great advice. In fact, that's ex so while I was competing, and when I talk about numbers like 5,000, which is ridiculous, but it was I, that I was eating. I would eat dinner around 6 or 7 p.m. at night, and then I'd have this big shake right before bed. So yeah. I'd have this big- Yeah, imagine if you flipped that, right? You had yes. the shake and then had a big dinner before bed. Right, right. And that for that exact reason, because I know that that shake will easily digest in 30 minutes to an hour, where food takes more like two hours plus to digest. And so I would know, oh, you know what? I'm getting ready to go to bed in the next half hour. Most of this shake will already be digested before I actually go to sleep. Yeah. Now, the vast majority of people listening are not dealing with super fast metabolisms where they need to eat tons and tons of calories. So most people listening, you're better off not eating a couple hours before bed. But those that small percentage of people who was like me when I was a kid, uh, if I didn't eat, have a shake right before bed, I would miss my calorie and protein targets. So for that, there was that trade-off, and it was worth it uh, for me. In that case, I agree with you, Adam. 
Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So if you like listening to our voices, imagine if you looked at our faces. It's really cool. Ooh. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram, including Doug. You can find Doug at Mind Pump Doug, Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. His foot through the hole in his hand. And so, you know, he's been playing a lot with that. And, That's a good time. Right. So he uh, he's grabbing my hand now and he wants, he wants me to put my hand through it, right? So uh, he grabs my hand to put it through there and I pretend like the book sucks my hand in. Oh, no. <laughs> and I go, ah! and the like, oh, dude, he just, ah! he 